All right, questions and answers. This week we talked about vectors, so let's see how much I confused you about vectors and in how many dimensions I confused you. So to start, what's the difference between polar form and Cartesian form? Well, yes, this is very fundamental. If you have a vector, say a velocity vector, the two ways to describe the vector are really just two coordinate systems that you use for two dimensions. One is polar. One, you have to know the magnitude of the vector. That's just a scary way of saying the length. And you got to know the magnitude and the angle from the horizontal. And if you're doing it mathematically proper, it's counterclockwise from the horizontal. But the other way to know this vector is to know its x component and its y component. That's the Cartesian system. So it actually makes sense. In two dimensions, you need two numbers to define it. It's either the length and angle or the Cartesian vx and vy. And also very important is to be able to jump from one to the other. A problem is often given in this, and you want to do the problem in this. Then you're going to go back to that to give the answer. So I'd refer you to the video or the vector lecture here on the YouTube channel or your book to remember how to go back and forth. So that is the fundamental issue for this, this week. What is the difference between speed and velocity in finding them from x and y components of a vector? All right, so let's say you were given a velocity vector. And it sounds like if you're given the components, let's say you're given the velocity vector v equals 3 i hat meters per second plus 4 j hat meters per second. And you've asked here, what uh, is the difference between you know, speed and velocity? So if you're asked for the velocity in this case, this is the velocity. The velocity is a vector. So if you're in Cartesian, you have to give it this way. Otherwise, you could say it's 5 at 30 degrees meters per second. So that is the velocity. It has to be a vector. But then the speed, the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. The speed is really how fast it's going. So the speed you'd write as v, you wouldn't put a vector hat on it, and the magnitude of a vector is the length, and the length, if we think of Pythagorean theorem, is the square root of 9 plus 16 is 5. What a wise choice I made there. 5 meters per second. So that's the difference. The magnitude is the speed. What should we do in class when tangent theta is undefined for the component, the two components of a vector? Um, if it's undefined, then you've messed up or we've messed up, right? So tangent is sine over cosine, and at angles where cosine is zero, it goes to infinity, and we would never give you a problem where we meant for that to happen, or if we do, it's an accident. So if you've found that tangent of theta is infinity, then you've probably made a mistake in the problem, so just go look at it again. <coughs> How will we know when a magnitude of acceleration is being asked for rather than a vector? Um, acceleration will usually be asked for as a vector. The problem should make it clear. The problem should make it clear. If, you're, if it asks and there's like one space there that says meters per second squared, that's probably a magnitude. If there's a space meters per second squared with an i-hat and a space meters per second squared with a j-hat, it's probably asking for a vector. So it should be clear from the context of the problem. But I would say if the word is given just as acceleration and nothing else, I would assume it's a vector. How do you multiply and divide vectors? We're going to get to that later. Dot product, cross product, we're not doing that yet, so don't worry about it. How did you get 86 degrees from the inverse tangent of 180 over 11? My calculator keeps giving me 1.51. 1. 1.51, uh, mm, 1 I think your calculator is probably in radians, right? Uh, if it's 86 degrees, that's actually almost 90 degrees, which is almost half of 180 degrees, which is basically pi over 2, and pi over 2 is 3.14, divided by 2 is a little bit over 1.5. Yes, your calculator is in radians. What day and when are pledge problems typically released? Yes, yeah, so our pledge problems are due usually Tuesday night. We usually get them out by Friday afternoon, Friday evening, so you have the whole weekend. Sometimes we get a little behind, Saturday maybe but we try to have them out on Friday. When do you use i-hat and j-hat? What do i-hat and j-hat mean? Why do we use them? And where did i-hat and j-hat come from? So I put these three together because I knew there'd be questions about unit vectors. Okay, so i-hat and j-hat, if you want to describe a vector in the Cartesian system, we have these two components. And those really by themselves aren't vectors. Those are the just mathematical components. They can be negative, right? We know a vector magnitude can't be negative. 
And when these components can be negative, if the vector points that way, it's got a negative vx component. So these things aren't vectors, but we want to use them to describe a vector. We always want to remember that this one is along the x and this one is along the y. And if we had a vector like this, where this component was 3 and this component is 4, then we know the length of that vector is 5, it's not 7. So we can never add the vx and the vy, we have to keep them separate. So the unit vector i hat and j hat is just the notation that tells you this one is along the x-axis and this one is along the y-axis. That is practically what you use them for. And when you write them in an expression, they're just constants. Just think of it as a constant. Okay? It's just a vector it's, that gives you a direction and its magnitude is 1, so it doesn't affect the component in front. It's just giving you the direction. Say you had a velocity changing in time that was 3t I, uh, meters per second. No, we put the vector first, sorry. I hat meters per second plus 4t squared j hat meters per second. And say you wanted to get the acceleration. Again, these are just constants. What I'm going to show you here, acceleration, is you just pretend it's not there. It's a constant. Usually a constant when you're taking a derivative or an integral, you bring it up front, but we don't like to bring it up front. We like to keep it in the back. We just remember it's a constant. So the acceleration here, the derivative of 3t with respect to time is 3. I hat is just along for the ride. Meters per second squared, just a constant. Here, this j hat is a constant. It's just there. You can bring it in front if you want. It's just there. So the derivative is 8t. And the, the j hat, just there. Okay. Same if you were going to do an integral. If you were going to integrate this expression, the i hat and the j hat, just treat them as constants. Okay. But you can't mix them. If you did an integral of this whole thing, you'd break it into an integral of this and an integral of this, and you'd do it separate. Let's see, so that's sort of when you use them, and that's uh, why do we use them, that's why we use them. But I like this last question, where did they come from? Well, I won't go with the obvious comment there, but really, where they came from, well, that's related to how would you make them? How, where do you, where, how do you, mathematically, what is it? So let's imagine we have a position vector r. Right? So this is something we have a lot. And in some problems you might be told, find the unit vector along the direction of r. If you're asked what that is symbolically, it's very simple. r hat. Right? The hat means unit vector. It's a the little hat instead of a, instead of a vector, a little arrow. Right? That's not a unit vector. That, that's a unit vector. So that'd be the easy way to write it. If you're asked to draw it, you say, oh, okay, r hat. We usually draw the unit vector like a little short thing because its magnitude is 1 and usually you assume the big vector is bigger than 1, although it doesn't have to be. But then mathematically, the way you define it is interesting. It's like this. It's the vector r divided by the magnitude of r. Because that would give you a unit vector along r, right? You know that the vector r is along the direction of r. And if you want its magnitude to be 1, you just take the vector r and divide it by its own magnitude. And that makes the unit vector. And then you could say, okay, well, what if I wanted to find, what if I was told to find the unit vector along, uh, in terms of the i hat and j hat? You might be asked that. Then what you would do is say, well, okay, say here, if I wanted the unit vector along v, say I was trying to find um, a v hat. Let's see if we can do that for this problem here, where it's just 3i plus 4j. So let's see, v hat would be what? It would just be the vector v, 3i hat plus 4j hat, right, divided by the magnitude, which we already said was 5, over 5. Whoa, that means the unit vector v hat here, if I had to draw it, would be 0.6i hat plus 0.8j hat. Look at that. I even did that without trig. You don't need trig if you really know what a unit vector is. Yeah. So anyway, that's more probably than you need to know about unit vectors, but hopefully that just get comfortable with them. But the main thing to remember when you're trying to use them is they're just constants for derivatives and integrals. Don't let them freak you out.